Okay, let's continue with uh, page 117 after the word example. So I would like you to take some time to read um, something from this page through uh, the next page um, and up to this page, so page 119 before the word example 2. So pause the video now and read it. Okay, so first of all, uh, in the first section, I, I talk about how to measure temperature. Uh, it has been always a challenge for the scientists to measure and unify the temperature scale. Uh, there is a video from Ferratesium uh, talking about how degree Celsius, Celsius scale has uh, was invented. Um, and it is actually quite interesting to take a look of that like before so before celsius what kind of scale were available and how come celsius scale uh, will be the one that we use the most nowadays uh, you know normally for normal normal citizens um, of course for scientists we use kelvin so um try to take a look of this video if you haven't i will put the link in the description so the basic idea of uh, measuring temperature of course we will use uh, something that would expand so you have learned about um, different ways of heat transfer so mainly we'll use a thermometer that is using the idea of conduction conduction will help you to expand uh, things like liquid um, so it helps you to you know see uh, the bar will go up or go down depending on the temperature so I'm not going too deep into this of course, there are another kind of uh, thermometer that relies on the radiation, especially nowadays uh, under the coronavirus. You see uh, people using the infrared thermometer more because it's non-contact, and therefore uh, they don't have to clean it that often. So uh, that is more like relying on the infrared emitted by your body. But traditionally or in experiment, we usually use conduction because that is usually more reliable and accurate um, another issue with uh, thermometer is that you usually have to calibrate the thermometer because uh, it's like every two you have to calibrate so maybe it will be a bit off etc so the usual way that we usually do is that uh, we're using the uh, freezing point and the boiling point which we all know or you can say is by definition that is 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. By the way, these are actually not exactly 0 and 100. But if you want to know more, you can try to Google to find the answer. It's not exactly 0 and 100. But um, for us, I mean, normally it's close enough to treat it as 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. So what you do is uh, you use these two points as the point for reference and you can try to uh, devise the other temperature one by one linearly. Again, these are all the things you learn in IGCSE. So, um, yeah, I think I think these are all uh, simple things you can read by yourself. And then, uh, these are just a map showing you the variation of the temperature. Apparently, I think for some of you who always travel, you know, or if you study geography, you know, uh, as far as you are closer to the equator, then the temperature is usually higher. Well, for the two pole, the temperature would be lower, and that's something to do with uh, the idea of uh, sunlight projecting onto the onto the Earth. So, um, again, if you're interested, go and, and try to uh, search or study about the idea, uh, the questions. I think I would not focus on this for now. So, if you're interested, if you really want to know how I will see it uh, or how I would explain it, you can ask me in person. So right here, um, there are a few terminology, very basic terminology you have to um, figure it out first. So first of all, uh, the word is heat and there are other words uh, as in internal energy. Uh, you may also see a word called thermal energy or thermal contact but not thermal energy uh, never mind I will just write here so thermal energy 
um, you may also find there's a question that in the previous video I asked you to do but actually I find out you haven't read that yet so um, we'll try to uh, see how you can explain it later on and you can also see how I'll explain it wrong okay and uh, you can try to read through this and basically later on we'll, I will address the question which actually addressing this so you should try to find the explanation here the other thing that you will see in this uh, test book on this page is that you should find uh, there is a diagram right here and then that will actually help you to see which I already copy here um, like why why is there a table like this my hint is that uh, this is the well if you look at the caption is the average separation of two particles and so imagine you got two particles um, this is R is simply the again the separation between them for the y-axis I can tell you that this is potential energy so think about this what I would like you to say is how come the potential energy will increase on this side and then how come it will be zero on this side and how come it will be a dip on this side and what do they actually mean okay so this is the um, the way that you could think about this diagram and answer in this question set booklet okay so right now I would like you to pause the video try the questions and continue continue the video afterward all right so the difference between these three terms uh, mainly I would say uh, the first two heat and thermal energy in IB sometimes they will say they are the same but what I see is um, they are a little bit different the most important thing however uh, is for heat you should see uh, it is a transfer of thermal energy uh, due to the difference in temperature so uh, this is very important quite some people will think oh heat is simply the thermal energy inside but then the most important thing is uh, the transfer of heat okay so um, you may try to use your word to write that here as in for internal energy um, internal energy is focusing more of um, the energy within the body where uh, we all learn that internal energy will equal to the ke plus the pe and for ke is something to do with the temperature higher temperature higher ke and more vibration of course while for pd is something to do with the state which means uh, the molecular force or force between the particle um, and that will refer to the potential energy so uh, altogether then that would be the internal energy so you can also find it here all right so it's a total random kinetic energy of the particle plus the total interparticle potential energy of the particles um, when you try to transfer the thermal energy uh, there are two consequences so you could uh, transfer the energy to ke in the form of ke or the other scenario is you could transfer the thermal energy in the form of potential energy so that's why sometimes when you try to heat up for example heat up water usually what you do is uh, first of all you would change the temperature so in the, by that time you'll be changing the ke maybe by the time when you change the temperature to 100 degrees celsius then the energy which is the thermal energy which is the heat from the external source would then transfer the energy in the form of potential energy okay so both of these of course would contribute uh, to the internal energy but then I hope you can distinguish the difference um, between these terms for the last one um, it would not be as easy to understand um, if you don't understand about the idea of potential energy uh, 
Uh, in fact, in chapter six, we also learn about potential energy also uh, in gravitation. So um, you can see that when the two particle, you can see this is when the radius, sorry, the distance are further apart from each other, uh, then the potential is zero. So that means if you try to separate two particles far apart enough, then the potential energy is zero. While when you are at this side, the potential energy becomes high. What does that mean with high potential? Is that it has a tendency to release the energy. As a thing about if you are, are on the ground and there's an apple in the air up high with some GPG, that means this apple is likely to fall down and this energy can be converted to kinetic energy, for example. So when you see things are in high potential energy, that means they could transfer this energy, convert this energy into some other form. So we can also illustrate this by using a simulation that we had used earlier, which is this one. Again, I'll put the link in the description if you want to use it. And basically, this is the diagram that we have. The most important thing that you should find out is um, at the lowest level here. This is where you have the particle at the most stable state the most stable. Uh, this is happening for all other things as well. Think about the things around the world. When it has the lowest potential energy, it is when it is the most stable. As if, again, when we talk about gravitational potential energy, the most stable state for a box is not in the air. It's when the box is on the ground. And that means it has the least potential energy. So in that case, um, this is the most, you may say, the most comfortable, of course, this is not a formal word, um, for the atoms uh, to stay away from each other with this distance. When they are really far apart, then in that case, then you, you know, they can, of course, there's no potential energy, so they have no way to move. However, if they are close enough, you can see it, for example, here, you can see from the graph here, they have a tendency to move downward to release this potential energy, like this. So there must be a force that will attract this atom towards the other one. And guess what the name of the force? If you study chemistry, then you should have heard about this name called the Van der Waals force, and that is the idea of how come the atom will be attracted to each other okay so this contribute to the attraction force what about these then how come if i push push it further then the potential energy will become higher and if i try to release my mouse here then you can see they will repel each other and they will simply be gone in that case. All right. So imagine you are like more right. You can you can actually take this graph as a roller roller coaster. So a roller coaster at this point, if I release it, they will simply be gone. Okay. So now what thing about the question is what is the force given behind these two atoms at this stage? Because when the when the graph force uh, is an attraction force, so it couldn't be the same force. Let me give you three seconds to think about it. The answer is actually uh, electrostatic force, which you have learned in chapter five. So these two atoms, uh, I mean, normal atoms, they usually are neutral, but then let's not forget the electron uh, outside of the atom, like the outer layer usually. While the, as you know, uh, the atom model, Rutherford atom model, the positive is in the middle. So what interact first is the electron outside. They will repel each other. And therefore, you cannot keep atom too close. Right. So that's why there is a there's a point where they are the most steady, which is at the middle. OK, so this is the idea of 
uh, the interaction and the potential energy itself. So that means when you're trying to uh, change its potential energy, basically this is what you do, right? By putting them further apart from each other, and then that could be something you are doing uh, in changing the state. So I hope you can find uh, the proper wording. Uh, you can you can express it here. The other thing that you can also try to state on the diagram is that uh, apparently this is the Van de Graaff Van de Graaff force, and this is an attraction force. While on the other side, this is the electrostatic force which is here in this case is repulsion repulsion or repelling force so this is how make uh, the graph look like this and this is happening for all the atoms okay so this is uh, the reason why there's a graph like this and usually it's actually quite hard to understand <coughs> 